the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to everyone from wherever you are worshipping this morning, if it is morning for you. We gather to allow the Word of God to speak to us. This morning we'll hear from Hebrews about the uniqueness of the priesthood of Jesus Christ, which will link us, obviously, through the Eucharist to our time of exposition, this self-offering of the Lord on the altar of sacrifice on Golgotha, the one risen from the empty tomb. As we honour him, we know we have to be drawn into our own priesthood, all of us, baptised as priest, prophet and king, to offer sacrifice of our lives to the Lord. Let us seek the way of the Lord as we open ourselves to the forgiving one. You call us, Lord, from sin to new life. Lord, have mercy. We have waited for you for your saving help. Christ, have mercy. You have stooped down to us and heard our cry. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Through the grace of the Holy Spirit we plead to be united as one in this act of worship and within our parish communities. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever Thank you. 
God beneath your feet. You are a priest forever, a priest like a Melchizedek of old. The Lord will wield from Zion your skeptic of power, rule in the midst of your all your foes. You are a priest forever, a priest like a Melchizedek of old. A prince from the day of your birth on the holy mountains, from the womb before the dawn I begot you. You are a priest forever, a priest like my Melchizedek of old. The Lord has sworn on an oath he will not change. You are a priest forever, a priest like Melchizedek of old. You are a priest forever, a priest like Melchizedek of old. Some people came and said to Jesus, Why is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not? Jesus replied, Surely the bridegroom's attendants would never think of fasting while the bridegroom is still with them. As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they could not think of fasting. But the time will come for the bridegroom to be taken away from them, and then on that day they will fast. No one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth on an old cloak. If he does, the patch pulls away from it, the new from the old, and the tear gets worse. And nobody puts new wine into old wine skins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins and the wine is lost and the skins too. No, new wine, fresh skins. The Gospel of the Lord. As we do continue to enter into our Eucharistic celebration, we need to have the words of Hebrews echoing in our ears and our hearts. This uniqueness of Christ the High Priest. I share the priesthood of the bishop along with my brother priests in the diocese and the bishop himself shares in the priesthood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this huge and wonderful interconnectivity. The Gospel, Jesus being tested again, why are you doing things differently than others? The time of sacrifice hadn't come, that took place on Holy Thursday night, Good Friday. And then we do fast, we have very definite times in the week, seasons of fasting. But then Jesus moves it on. He's doing a new thing, so new ways are needed. As he sits in church, speaking to a camera and to an extended community of, I have no idea how many households, we are doing a new thing in a new way. We have had to adapt and respond to the issues that face us with the pandemic. And we're doing fantastically well, it seems to me. All these new things 
that together we have struggled to embrace those of you for whom technology is easier, you've just done it so quickly and so easily. For others of us, it's been a real struggle. But we're here, we're worshipping, we're studying scripture, we'll have exposition after Mass, we'll have the Rosary again on Thursday. Please join us for our formation, new wine, new skins, doing a new thing in a new way, both on Zoom and also via live streaming. Joining us on Zoom is so much better because then you can share in the discussion. It's rather difficult to keep on typing questions or, or comments. Plus, I get a crick in my neck talking to the Zoom people and then turning around to the camera. So be kind to me. Join us on Zoom. And also be aware of our response to the Gospel. Somebody asked me last March, April, via the comments on the live streaming, would we continue to do this afterwards, once we have overcome this terrible virus? And the answer was straight away, yes, of course. Why we have not been doing it before has simply been an oversight. This is a wonderful way to reach out to those who are housebound, those who find it difficult to join us for Mass, depend upon others to bring them. So of course, we will continue. We have the new line in, I should be soon receiving the, whatever it's called, who knows? I don't know, it's gone out of my head. See, technology, you know, it's definitely not the magic little box that enables us to connect to the internet. You know what I mean. So we'll have that soon. We're looking at uh, a camera to be fitted onto the top of the choir loft as well. So the quality will be fantastic. It will also be able to do zooming in to be aware of the different aspects of the Eucharistic celebration. Talk about new wine, new skins, doing new things in a new way. Of course, we continue to adapt. Of course, we reach out to the good news with those that join us online. So let us turn and offer our prayers. The news this morning was very, very good for those in their 70s and with severe health issues that they will be receiving letters soon. So it's fantastic that more and more of the population are being vaccinated. My turn will come soonish. Not quite 70 yet. So we ask the Lord to help those administering, those receiving the vaccine, to continue to be very, very careful, as it does take a while to produce the antibodies to the virus. Lord, heal us. Let's remember especially Christians in all sorts of very, very fraught situations where they are oppressed minorities, where they are persecuted. Let's be honest, they are not going to be amongst the first to receive the vaccine in these challenging situations. So let's pray for them. Let's act on their behalf as well. Lord, Hear us. Continue to pray for parents homeschooling, pray for children homeschooling as well. It must cross their the children's minds now and again, teenagers too. Do you know, I didn't like my maths teacher, for example. I wish I was having maths in school now. Mum, Dad, you just don't get it. Differential calculus, what's that all about? So we pray for those receiving homeschooling, those striving to deliver it as well. Lord, hear us. And we offer to the Lord by name those that we have been asked to pray for as a tower of, of prayer and support for those around us. For Hassan, Pat, Lillian Brocklesby, Julius and Ansi, Edmund, Kenneth Edwards, Peter, 
Eileen Rushton and Greg Colquitt. We remember quite a few people are from the parish who are unwell, some of whom are in hospital. Lord, heal us. And we pray for those who have died recently. Ina, Kevin and John Hammond. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. And remember the dear departed of the MacDonald family. O Divine Teacher, grant that we might never hesitate to follow you and abide with you. Help us to know and live within the sovereignty of your Father's eternal kingdom, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in goodness you created us, and when we were justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed us, through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven, and the blessed seraphim, worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he 
who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Mark our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with all the saints, sorry, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Let us, with the universal, the highest priest, pray with and through the Spirit to the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In whichever situation we find ourselves, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. I'll just bring the camera forward now. O salutare sostia, que celi pondes ostium, bella premuta stilia, thou robo far auxilium. Unicino quen domino, sed sempita la gloria, Qui vitam sine termino, nobis donet in patria. Amen.
ask a prayer from Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Nowhere on earth are you more welcome. Nowhere on earth are you more loved than by Jesus living and truly present in the most blessed sacrament. The time you spend with Jesus in the blessed sacrament is the best time you will spend on earth. To me, Jesus is my God. Jesus is my spouse. Jesus is my life. Jesus is my only love. Jesus is my all in all. Jesus is my everything.
thy servant be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her spouse most chaste. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Unto Mago Sacramento, Mene Remo Chanui, Et Anticum Documentum, Nocederit Tui, Preste Fides presence of the Lamb who was slain for us. May our faith be rewarded by the vision of his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Nossa 